How fibers are spun. How short, thin fibers are made up into one long thread. It is perhaps not easy to understand the working of modern machines used for spinning, but we may get quite a good idea of the spinning processes if first we see them done by hand, next by simple spindles, and then by some of the early spinning wheels. Using the hands only is not very satisfactory. The thread from this tuft of wool, straight from the sheep's back, tends to break. Some preparation of the fibers is needed. The first stage of preparation is called opening out. We'll see the opening out of wool and then of cotton fibers. Wool fibers are opened out like this to prevent bunches of them from clinging together. Such bunches would produce an uneven thread. Uneven threads are weak in places. They do not look well and they're difficult to spin. In addition, opening out gives the chance to blend wool from different parts of the sheep's back. This is raw cotton. That is, cotton as it was picked from the bowl of the cotton plant. This West African woman is taking out the cotton seeds, a process known as ginning. In the textile industry, ginning is done much more quickly by machines. When the seeds have been taken out, the raw cotton is picked up on a stick. Knocking the stick repeatedly separates the fibers. Quite soon, the raw cotton is ready for spinning. Wool needs carding. A carder is a wooden tool with hundreds of wire pins close together in straight rows sticking up on one side. Wool is placed on one carder and another similar carder drawn across. The pins of each face one another. The process is really rather like combing or brushing your hair. There are three results of carding. The fibers are further separated, they lie roughly in the same direction, and there is a fairly even texture. With wool prepared like this, we are likely to get a good, strong, even thread. The wool comes off the carders quite easily. To make it simple to handle during spinning, it is made into a roll called a rollag. A good many rollags are made so that spinning can go on without interruption. Before looking at some of the ways in which wool, cotton and silk fibers are actually spun, let us pause for a moment to see where we are. Spinning means opening out fibers, twisting, winding. We've seen the opening out stage, now we go on to the twisting and winding stages. She is using a hand spindle. The thread is taken round the bottom of the spindle and then a simple knot is made at the top. When the spinner has used up all the fibers from one rollag, she twists a few fibers from the end of a new one with a thread already on the spindle, thus making a join. With her right hand, she sets the spindle revolving. She draws out the fibers and from time to time she spins the hanging spindle. When a length has been spun, the thread is unhitched from the tip and wound round the stem of the spindle. The thread is fastened on as before. The actual twisting has to stop for the winding on and the winding on stops for the twisting. This is an improvement on the method of using unprepared wool and only the fingers. The making of thread from fibers is done almost all over the world. 
Here is the way a peasant from Yugoslavia spins. The carded wool is fastened to a distaff. The spinner's left hand controls the drawing out of the wool so that a uniform thread is produced. Years of practice have made her fingers very skillful. She can spin like this even when walking along. But winding on and spinning are still separate. When the spindle is almost at arm's length, she must stop to wind on the newly spun thread. Cotton and silk can be spun in much the same way. Here is our West African woman spinning. Again the twisting stops for the winding on. The knot at the top of the spindle is the same. The weight of the spindle, however, is partly supported by the bow. The method is suitable for delicate fibres and thin threads. But imagine the patience needed to produce thread by these hand-spinning methods. It is not surprising that inventors tackled the problem. One of the most important of their early attempts was the great wheel, which has a driving band that turns the spindle. One turn round of the wheel produces many turns of the spindle. Thus, the actual twisting is greatly speeded, and so is the winding on, but they are still separate processes. An invention which provides for twisting and winding on to take place at the same time is the treadle wheel. The treadle wheel frees both hands for spinning. The foot provides the power by means of a treadle. The really important part is the spindle. Let's examine it closely. On the left, the fibres enter the spindle through a hole. They are twisted and pass over one of a series of hooks on a horseshoe-shaped part called the flyer. This almost surrounds the bobbin. There are two driving bands. The one on the right turns the flyer and the one on the left turns the bobbin. Here is the bobbin and its driving band outlined. The bobbin turns round independently of the flyer. The flyer, spindle and driving band are now outlined. Bobbin and flyer revolve. These twist the thread and they also wind it on at the same time. To make the bobbin wind evenly, the thread is moved from one hook on the flyer to another. Notice that the bobbin can rotate independently of the flyer. But to wind the thread, the bobbin must revolve faster than the flyer. We'll mark the two pulleys. First the bobbin, then the flyer. Now turn the driving wheel and see which mark comes round first. The bobbin. Let's do it again. The bobbin has gone much further round. It revolves more quickly than the flyer and thus draws the thread through the spindle and onto itself. Now for a moment or two, we'll look at the wheel in action. On the left, fibres from a rolag are drawn through a hole in the end of a spindle. They are twisted. The thread passes through a hole in the side of the spindle and is wound onto the bobbin by the flyer. In modern mills, the processes of spinning are all mechanised. But what is done to the fibres is really much the same. Drawing out, twisting and winding on. We'll look into a modern mill. What a contrast. But we can recognise upright spindles, flyers and bobbins. The fibres enter and leave the flyers as in the treadle wheel, but there are no hooks on the flyers. They move up and down over the bobbins instead. Yes, this is a contrast. And it has needed the efforts of many generations to produce the change. But what is actually done to the fibres remains the same. <laughs>